it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I have some updates for you in regards to Outlander. Apparently there is going to be a season eight. I really thought season seven was the finale, but many of you told me that in fact there is a season eight. So right now there is 16 episodes in season seven and there's going to be 10 episodes in season eight. However, now that there's the writer strike, we don't know what's going to happen because they're not filming season eight, and we definitely don't want another drought lander. But I have some good news. They're actually working on a prequel to the series called Blood of My Blood. This one is going to be the love story between Jamie's parents, Ellen McKenzie and Brian Frazier. So they're working on that one. So that's going to be exciting that at least we'll have something else from the makers of Outlander coming out in the future. And for all the rest of y'all who have not jumped on board the Outlander train, this is the best time to do it. It is an amazing show. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the royal daily tea. So Prince William is going to miss out on a very important day for King Charles. He is going to miss out on King Charles's first king speech at the state opening of Parliament. The date for the very first state opening of Parliament of King Charles's reign has just been announced, but the Prince of Wales has another commitment. The House of Lords announced on Thursday that the 2023 state opening of of Parliament will take place on November 7th. But Prince William is going to be in Singapore for the 2023 Earthshot Prize Awards. Now it is very unclear whether Catherine will be with William in Singapore or will she be attending the opening of Parliament. Now, although this will be the very first state opening of Parliament of King Charles's reign, Last year, he stepped in for his late mother, Queen Elizabeth, at the event in May of 2022. Now, the state opening of Parliament is a very important and key moment in the political and constitutional calendar as it sees the monarch as the head of state outline the main legislation that the serving UK government wishes to introduce over the coming months. Now this event is steeped in royal tradition and royal regalia. Now although Queen Elizabeth opted to wear a day dress and a hat in recent years, the state opening of Parliament often saw the late monarch wearing the imperial state crown or a diadem and her long velvet robe of state. Meanwhile, members of the House of Lords wear ceremonial robes and judges of the High Court of Justice wear wigs. It is unclear if King Charles will wear the historic headpiece for the state opening of Parliament in November, but the crown will still be present for the event. Is Meghan Markle a sociopath? Well, according to Samantha Markle's lawyer, he believes she definitely could be. Now, in a new interview, he sat down referring to the former actress as a sociopath, even citing a few instances where she displayed the mental disorder. Ouch. Peter Tickton, the senior partner at the Tickton Law Group, who was representing Samantha Markle, sat down for an interview with Newsweek where he took major swipes at Meghan Markle. He said, quote, I'm not certain as to her exact diagnosis. I don't know for sure whether she is a psychopath, a sociopath, or has borderline personality disorder with narcissistic tendencies. I just believe she's one of those most probably a sociopath. Even though Megan's lawyers are yet to respond, 
her lawyer, Michael Kump, previously waved away the lawsuit, calling it absurd. So as we know, Samantha Markle is suing Meghan Markle for defamination over comments and claims that Meghan Markle made during the Oprah Winfrey interview and also during comments that were shared with Omid Scooby-Doo in his book, Finding Freedom. Now, according to Meghan Markle's lawyer, he said this baseless and absurd lawsuit is just a continuation of a pattern of disturbing behavior we will give it the minimum attention necessary, which it all deserves. Now, continuing on with his interview with Newsweek, Mr. Tipton, the lawyer for Samantha Markle, said that everyone was very happy for Meghan Markle when she first started dating Harry. The family was all very supportive. We all loved Meghan when she started to date Harry in time. We all learned that Meghan was not exactly what we thought she was. Too many, the bloom came off the rose with a thud. Here you have a person who should have been on top of the world, and instead she sowed seeds of destruction and harm, not only onto her father, the royal family, but her wheelchair-bound sister. And I fully agree with his statement. He also said it is an unfortunate situation when a person is at odds with not only their own family, but on families on both sides. And I agree. Have you ever met someone? They're just fighting with the entire world, but then they're the victim. I know someone like that. And it's kind of like you do the process of elimination. If there's a problem and you're involved in every single problem, honey, you're the problem. It's not everyone else. And you just have a really bad string of luck. No, sweetheart. It's you. So speaking on the couple's troubled relationship and marriage, Mr. Tickton added, quote, This wasn't love on a first date. It was a calculated psyop to land a prince. I 100% agree with his analysis. This wasn't a meet cute where he just happened to see her on her friend's Snapchat. Come on, is anyone buying that story? Meghan Markle had a plan. Meghan Markle is a very calculated person. She doesn't do something unless there's going to be a win for her. She is a game player. She is a strategist. This was not a meet cute. This was a very calculated move from a very ambitious woman who wanted to land a rich husband from the UK. Let's not make any bones about it, guys. This was not a love story. This is a very calculated psyop. We all know that Meghan Markle pretty much stalked Prince Harry for over a year. In my opinion, she literally befriended every single person on the outskirts of his friend group. So somehow, some way, she was going to run into him and be like, oh, I'm a friend of a friend. Oh, uh. no. This was a plan. The woman is very calculated. She went to all of the places that she knew he would go or that a rich man would go, and she befriended Eugenie and other people in his circle. Literally like four or five different people, guys. It's not a coinky-dink. So in my opinion, she definitely had a strategy, and Harry had no idea what was happening. And I don't believe the story of the Snapchat that he just saw her in a puppy dog filter and she was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Give me a freaking break. Okay, come on. Nobody's buying it. I think what happened is Megan flew into your DMs and you're trying to act like you chased her, but we all know she chased you because that is what a narcissistic woman does. Okay. She was on the prowl, you were her prey, you got caught, and you guys made up quite a few of these fake meet cute stories. I mean, you can't even get that story straight. That tells you right there, red flags, y'all are lying about the story. So I love the fact that her lawyer, Samantha Markle's lawyer, is calling her out, that people are starting to see the truth. Remember that famous statement that Meghan Markle was like, I just wanted to know, is he kind? Because if he wasn't kind, well, then it just wasn't going to happen. Coming from the woman who's pretending to be Snow White, but who is Corilla DeVille. I mean, come on, you think kindness was the number one thing and the only thing that Meghan Markle wanted on her, her list of men to date? I don't think so. She wanted gullible, 
rich, and easy to dominate. Check, check, check. I got a winner. Come on. So another example that Mr. Tickton used to prove his point that Meghan Markle's a sociopath with narcissistic tendencies, his other example was, of course, I know, guys, I'm sorry, the Procter & Gamble commercial where Meghan Markle changed the ad. Literally, that's going to be on the woman's tombstone. Here lays Meghan Markle, the woman who had Procter & Gamble change the commercial to not say women, but to say people like to wash dishes. I mean, the woman is going to have it on her tombstone, guys. I'm surprised she hasn't tattooed it on her arse to let people know how important she is. But again, he said that changing their misogynistic ad as one of the ways she displayed her sociopathic nature. So what do you think? Do you agree with Samantha Markle's attorney and that Meghan Markle could possibly have one of these disorders? Well, I have to say he's definitely got her number and I for one am 100% in agreement with Mr. Tickton. Has Prince Harry burned his final bridge with his brother, Prince William? In my opinion, he most certainly has, that Prince William has wiped his hands of his little brother, Prince Harold. Now, there's been a lot of news reports, speculations, and stories that Prince Harry reached out to his big brother, Prince William, in an SOS phone call, kind of a truce. Take me back, bro. I'm real sorry for all the crap I've done. But me and Megan, we're going to offer our services to the royal family if you want us. We're ready. We're going to come over. Now, we all know that Meghan Markle most certainly would not be on board with that. But I do believe that Harry wants to go back to the UK. He's desperate. Deals are drying up. The reputation's in the toilet. Things are not going well over in Montecito. But in my opinion, Prince William is 100% done with his brother. And it's very obvious. Now, if you remember, during the book's fair, Prince Harry spilled the beans how both King Charles and Prince William tried to have a conversation with Prince Harry at Prince Philip's funeral. But Harry wasn't listening. He was not having it. Instead, he wanted them to apologize to his wife, Meghan Markle. But both William and Charles told him, we love you, Harold. We're concerned about you, Harold. You're hanging out with these wacky psychologists who are putting you on hallucinogens. You believe that your wife is your mom? I mean, bro, let's get you some help. Who are you surrounding yourself with? But he didn't want to hear it. Because he had it all under control. This was right after the Oprah Winfrey interview. They were riding high. People were feeling sorry for them. He was still very angry and bitter and was not open to receiving any help and support from his family. Now, if you look at the Queen's funeral, you could see the tension between William, Catherine, Meghan, and Harry. And you can tell Kate was like, we're not doing this today, sis. She was shooting major daggers at Megan, and Megan looked like she was scared of Kate because Kate was like, you think you're going to publicly destroy me, sis? Not today. So again, Harry and Megan sat there with their tails between their legs. You know, you could tell they look a little bit defeated and that William and Catherine had to rein them in during the funeral walkabout, and it was extremely awkward. But I still believe at that point, William would have been open to a reconciliation. He was still very concerned about his little brother hanging out with these weird doctors, taking these weird medications, and with Meghan Markle, who acts like she's channeling their dead mother. I mean, anybody with half a brain cell would be very concerned for a family member who did a complete 360 gave up everything in their life for a partner and is going downhill. I believe William and King Charles were 100% still trying to get behind Harry and Meghan and support them somehow. But that all changed after the docuseries and the book Spare dropped in January of 2023. After that, I do believe Prince William said we're done. It became very evident when Harry and Meghan were evicted in February of 2023 and told you have to move out of Frogmore Cottage. Now, the excuse they told the public 
was that they were downsizing the royal family. They wanted to move Prince Andrew and Fergie out of the royal lodge, move him to Frogmore. And that could very well be one of the reasons. But in my opinion, that's not the main reason. I believe Prince William said, I want them gone. You have to remember, Prince William and Catherine now live at Adelaide Cottage, which is five minutes from Frogmore Cottage on the Windsor Castle estate. They don't want them there. Prince William has to go into protector mode. You have to remember his family, his children. Prince George is the future of the monarchy. He can have public enemy number one, Prince Harry, and Medusa Meghan Markle living five minutes from them. In my opinion, he put his foot down and told King Charles, I want them gone. So they came up with this plot to say, well, you need to move out since you're not living here and Andrew's going to move in. But you have to remember the royal family does things very strategically, but very silently. They don't publicly announce things unless they're 100% ready to do so. But by removing Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage, they got quite a few things accomplished. One, Prince William said, get them the hell off the property. I need my protection for my family. Two, it's now going to make it very hard for Prince Harry to be a counselor of the state because he doesn't have a UK residence, right? And the third one, of course, is the option they could have it open for another royal to move in, possibly Prince Andrew. But I do believe it was Prince William who said, I'm done with them. You know, I tried to be there for him. He's crapped on the family. He's now a danger to us. We need to draw a line in the sand and let them know you're not going to walk all over us. You're not going to have the privilege of having a home in the UK. If you want to come to the UK, you can schlump it to a local hotel, call one of your buddies, or maybe if you're really nice, we'll hook you up with a room at Buckingham Palace. But as far as you staying on the Windsor Estate and having Frogmore Cottage, those days are over, son. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I believe William put his foot down and he has decided we're done here. So now, you know, Prince Harry is desperate because he realizes his brother is done with him. You ever get to that point with someone where you try to help them and they crap on you, you forgive them, you take them back, you go out of your way for them and they keep doing it over and over. You have to get to a point where you have to say, I'm done. I wish you well but I'm not dancing with you anymore. I'm not playing this game with you anymore. I believe William has decided his family is more important than Prince Harry. You can tell the anger and attitude that Prince Harry had during the coronation when he sat with the tier two royals three rows back right behind Princess Anne's red plume. He was seething. Now, there were some lip readers who read his lips when he was talking to Jason Brooksbank, the husband of Princess Eugenie, and he said, I'm done here. Like, he won't meet with me. He, he won't talk with me. I do believe he was trying to reach out to Prince William, and Prince William said, nope, not today. You could tell that Prince William didn't even acknowledge his presence. You could see that Harry was kind of looking over to his brother, Prince William and Catherine and those children did not give him the time of day. And you could tell that he was angry. He was only there for 36 hours. He was in and out. He knows he is 100% ostracized from his family. Now, publicly, they will invite him to state events because they kind of have to, hoping maybe he won't go. But again, I do believe the final card has fallen. They've sent him that message. And now Prince Harry is panicking because he has sided with Carilla DeVille. He has hooked his wagon to a losing horse. And I think he now knows it. So did he send an SOS phone call from one of his 16 bathrooms on a burner phone that Megzi doesn't know about? possibly, but I don't believe it actually went to Prince William, maybe an assistant, because I believe 100% that Prince William is done with 
Harry. The only way Prince William would actually have a real relationship with Harold is if he divorced Meghan Markle, came with his hands on a bended knee and apologized to Catherine and everyone in the royal family for the horrible behavior that he's had for the past three years. Now, we all know that's not going to happen anytime soon, but I do believe that Prince William has finally said, we're done here, and Harry is now reaping what he sows. So do you believe that there is no truce going to be happening anytime soon between Prince Harry and Prince William? Well, that is all the royal news that I have for you guys today. Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.